So last June, Bandai teaming with Tamashi Nations, which you might know best for doing Metal Build Gundams. I believe it's Metal Build Gundam or Metal Structure. I know this is the Metal Structure. They also do Metal Build. Then there was the Formania versions of the 160th scale bust of Gundams. New Gundam, Sasabi, GPO-1, maybe Zeta? No, they didn't do Zeta. Well, anyway, this is the long-awaited metal structure, 160th scale, New Gundam. Many Gunpla fans, or Bandai fans in general, that love the series have been waiting for 160th scale, New Gundam for as far back as the Perfect Grade line has been around, and there has been absolutely nothing, and I mean nothing, from Bandai. The closest you came to 160th scale new Gundam was G-Systems or some other resin kit manufacturer that was pretty much left to the very advanced modelers to do. This is a market that is completely and utterly untapped and still to this day Bandai is failing to fill the gap. So they left it to Tamashii Nations to make the metal structure new Gundam. Honestly, the presentation is not bad at all. I like it. It reminds me a lot of like a resin kit from Anchor T, if you will. The separate boxes with their own art, which I like a lot. There's a lot to enjoy here. You could tell that this is a premium item from beginning to end, from top to bottom. The packing was very well done. You already saw the foam stuff that was on top of the box to make sure there's absolutely no scratching while inside, as if you'd care if the box got scratched at all or scuffed. Maybe some people do. Now, this retailed at $888 if you were lucky enough to get it from Hobby Link Japan. 900 and something from everyone else. I was helped out by Harry from New Type HQ. I asked him, hey, can you get this for me, Harry? He goes, we'll get you one. Then they couldn't get me one. But then Harry said, listen here, go to Bluefin. They've got some in stock, hurry up. And I ran over there and immediately pre-ordered it for the normal price. I almost regret not getting two. And if you're wondering how I got it, I have great credit, dude. See, being responsible pays off. Every now and then you can get something completely and utterly frivolous. Now, the reason why I bought this was because last year I really wanted a new motorcycle helmet. And it was the Lorenzo 2018 Shark GP Pro Limited Edition Winter Test Helmet. All carbon fiber, this aggressive back fin. And I kept dragging my feet on it. And I was like, oh, well, it's 900 and some dollars. Uh, it's a lot of money. I mean, even if I charge and pay it off my card, it's a big step. And while I dragged my ass fearing over the price, they all sold out. And now I can't get one at all. I lament it to this day. So when this came off of pre-orders, I said to myself, I'm not making the same mistake twice. Even though I probably need a motorcycle helmet more than I need this. But whatever, I'll get one later. This is limited edition. So... I pulled the trigger immediately, no questions asked. Big thanks to Harriet New Type HQ, the guy's always looking out for me. I hope you guys went to Blue Friend to get the fin funnels because they had them at the retail price, unlike everyone else, including Big Bad Toy Store that wants $400 for the V-Fins, not the V-Fins, the fin funnels. I'm going to be real with you. This thing is premium from top to bottom, the Tanashi Nation's book has a little bit of information only one section is in english where they explain their thought process and methodology of creating the metal structure new gundam and the instruction manual that's like any other instruction manual if you've ever bought any tamashi nations metal build figure gundam model or whatever the hell they call these things straightforward to the point easy to understand color instruction manual i'm grateful for that even though everything's in japanese not much i can say here but it gives you an idea of just how much work has gone into this. The level of detail is absolutely stunning. And I should save my overall thoughts for the review because I'm just going to end up repeating myself. So maybe I should just do that. I'm going to say that Bandai should probably take a note from Tamashii Nations here with the level of just sheer detail and opening hatches on the new Gundam. I want to see this in perfect grades. I actually really like this thing. It's expensive, and it's very heavy, surprisingly. Only the inside's made of metal, guys, not the outside. Everything else is plastic. So if you are someone who's into customizing and you don't mind possibly ruining the value of this figure, have at it. It won't be too hard to paint. For me personally, as much as I'd like to modify this thing, I'm not going to because these have been discontinued from what Hobby Link Japan says. So I believe these will become very rare, sought after, and highly expensive as time goes on. Who knows, 
Bandai and Tamashi Nations may do another reissue down the road, maybe a year from now. Who really knows? I mean, they did it with the Hulkbuster. I think that was Hot Toys that did that, though. The Hulkbuster was, like, crazy expensive, and people were going nutty for it. Then they re-released it, and the value of it plummeted. So, yeah. Maybe wait it out if you can't get one. Honestly, everything here is premium. Beautiful, lovely to look at. I, If I were to nitpick things, I'd say I wish that there was a bit better paint jobs. I wish they did some panel line work on the white. That would have been nice. There's a bit of opportunity there to make it look a bit better. I would have liked more detail in the faceplate, but that's just me, you know, whatever. And the fact that it's fairly rare, I just can't bring myself to make alterations. The base itself is kind of lame. I'm not going to lie to you, the base is all plastic. It's very flimsy. There's a lot of seam lines. The interesting thing, though, is there's a lot of molded in detail that's not bad. Once again, if this thing wasn't so rare, this would be a prime thing to paint and customize and to make it look better the hyper bazooka i could be wrong if that's not the name of it pretty beefy nice to look at a couple gimmicks i love the opening and closing really it's sad that this isn't a perfect grade because there's just so much here there's so much detail and it's fantastic that it exists but then again you have to keep in mind this thing costs a thousand dollars if you were to get it at retail some people pay two thousand to get one from the secondhand market so i would say it should have a lot of detail and at least i'm not disappointed in that front this is very very nice i'm going to say that there's a strong strong possibility that neelan works and uh d-bon Daban, whatever they're called there's going to be third-party companies that are going to take this thing reverse engineer it and turn it into an affordable model kit that'll probably be like two three hundred bucks but then again, the Nielsen works, uh, what is it? Green frame is like $90 in its perfect grade size. So you never know. They might do it dirt cheap and then it'll give a guy like me a shot to buy one and then custom paint it myself to the way I'd like to see it. Some of the hatches are a little hard to open. I tried it on the gun here. It's not really working out for me and I'm not going to force the issue. Believe me, it's too expensive to force anything. The paint seems very sturdy in all honesty. And the gimmicks just don't stop. They're everywhere in every part of this thing. I guess that makes up for the lack of articulation, if you will. You can't really pose this thing that much. And that's pretty much expected. This is literally a glorified statue. It can do a few things you like, and that's about it. Here's the shield. There's a lot going on here. Very nice. Opening hatches everywhere. You know, like I said, the only thing I can really nitpick is the fact that they could have did so much more detailed paint work, but I guess they did that. The price would probably go up. They're, I don't know where the hell you'd find someone who would sit there and want to paint all the little knickknacks like a thousand or a hundred thousand times. Who even knows how many of these were made? I, I'm, I don't know. All I know is they're all sold out from retailers. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, here's the sweet thing about Tanashi Nations I'm going to say right here. One, they don't make the hatch too hard to get into. The screw isn't like so tight that you worry about stripping it. That's a good thing. On top of that, they actually add the LR41 batteries, which I was worried they wouldn't add, but it didn't really matter because messing with Gumpla, LR41 batteries, I think, are the ones that are used inside of the Bandai and third-party LED head pieces. They're like 14 bucks. So I had a whole ton of those just sitting around. Look, right there. Already got the battery. That is nice. Gotta give it to Tamashii Nations. Usually when it comes to stuff like this, Bandai will not give you a battery. It's kind of like, you better have one, loser. And that's the new Gundam put together. I didn't really add Snap Together Stand and whatnot. I don't think anybody wants to sit there, sit there and watch me fiddle with this. I'm going to say that I'm pleased with it thus far. This is a premium piece. Completely. The other thing I lament is it's quite big. It's 1/160 of scale. It's a little taller than the Unicorn, and the proportions I feel for the Tamashii Nation's new Gundam is superior to the Unicorn Perfect Grade Gundam. It gets everything right. It has the robot feel. It's 
that right level of bulky, but not too much. It looks like a machine and the head is not tiny. For some reason, Bandai is going through a phase of making Gunpla where the heads are really small. It just doesn't look right. Tenmashi Nations did not take that road and I'm very happy they did. This thing is just the dog's bollocks, as they say. Well, tomorrow I will try to do a full review showing off hatches and whatnot with some straight up camera pin. The usual thing I do that you see on my channel. Um, this guy is way bigger than my set. So filming it might be a struggle. By the way, the walkway for the new Gundam, uh, mine is a little warped. So I guess I'm going to have to get a heat gun and try and slowly bend it back into place, which kind of sucks that it's kind of pointing down for some reason.